Good afternoon and welcome to the Cato Institute. For those of you who don't know, my name is David Bowes. I'm the Executive Vice President of the Institute. I'm glad to have you all here. Uh, glad to have such a uh, good crowd today for an interesting subject. For those of you who hear something you want to follow up on later, I might note that all of our forums are posted on our website, www.cato.org, and usually within 24 hours or so, you can either watch or listen to uh, the event um, from now and, and on into the future. We're going to discuss a controversial issue today. Why is there an income gap between men and women? And I'm sorry that Larry Summers couldn't be here to comment. Um, Larry Summers is the president of a great university who went to an academic conference and asked an academic question. Why do we observe a gap among men and women at the top ranges of science? And what might be the explanation for that gap? And you've probably all noticed that they have tried to read him out of the university for raising a question, why do we see this and what would be the explanation? So I hope that we can have a more serious discussion, if not at Harvard, then at a think tank. Um, you know, Alan Kors wrote in a book a few years ago that one of the reasons think tanks have risen in the past 25 years is that universities have become increasingly intolerant of actual intellectual discussion and increasingly mired in esoteric deconstructionism, postmodernism, but not in actual scientific and social science examination of real issues with real debate. We hear a lot about various pay gaps between men and women, between blacks and whites, between different other ethnic groups. And we're normally told that discrimination is always the answer. And as you've seen at Harvard, we're told that you shouldn't ask if something else could be the answer. We are indeed told by a senior scientist at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology that she becomes physically ill and unable to breathe if she hears an idea she disagrees with. Um, this is somebody who thinks it's very important to have women in positions like professors at MIT to serve as role models for young women who can learn how to be a scientist. Um, I'm sorry that Larry Summers couldn't be here today. I'm also sorry that a string of leading feminists turned down our invitation to comment on this book. We did invite a number of feminist leaders uh, to come and offer their comments on this book, positive or negative. Uh, we're glad to have healthy debate here. I'm sorry they're not here. But maybe Warren Farrell is a leading feminist. He, after all, was elected three times to the National Organization for Women board in New York City, so maybe that makes him qualify. Since that time, he's gone on to write a couple of bestsellers, including Why Men Are the Way They Are, The Myth of Male Power. Um, he's been named one of 100 world thought leaders by the Financial Times. And he now has a book out called Why Men Earn More, the startling truth behind the pay gap and what women can do about it. And I was just asking him whether the book might be more likely to get positive attention if he had titled it instead, How Women Can Close the Pay Gap. It wouldn't have changed the content of the book because the book attempts to examine why on average men earn more than women and what women can do about it if that's a concern to them as individuals. Please welcome the author of Why Men Earn More, Warren Farrell. Uh, before I start, I want to thank David Bowes, because um, when I speak up here, it's a very simple process for me to speak for a half hour or whatever. But David has put um, many, many hours into organizing this and working out the details. And I'd like us to acknowledge the, the effort he's put into this. Thank you. Um, I'm looking at it to this audience, and only a, a fraction of you have heard me speak before, but those of you who do 
know what's going to be coming next, which is that I never give a speech in the normal way of speech giving. I always do something interactive with the audience. And so I'm going to be asking you to work with me today because you'll get a lot more out of this presentation as you, as you actually experience some of the things I'll be talking about. I'm going to ask all of the men to sit over on this side and all of the women to sit over on this side. And we'll be doing something interactive that will allow us to see the results in relation to a pay gap much more um, easily. So in case you forgot who you are, it's men over here and women over here, okay? <laughs> no, I'm being serious. This is just for, yes. You, you, <laughs> this will be a lot of fun. Well, <laughs> this uh, young woman would like somebody up front with her. She's uh, <laughs> other people sensing that it's interactive are fleeing toward the back. <laughs> Uh, Mar Maria will look into it. Okay, great. Well, we have a technological per person that's Maria. Um, shall I use the number? No, 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 here, let me, let me go find out. That is working. Are you working with me? Is it? Yes. Is there a woman here that can fix, do this something technologically here with this? <laughs> okay. Um, what I found was that there are 25 differences between what men and women do in the workplace. That each of those differences, on average, lead to men earning more money. But each of those differences also lead to women having better lives. So the, you know, once again, the women have outsmarted us. Um, so the book, therefore, does not suggest that women should do each of these things, because I obviously want women to have two daughters. I want women to have better lives and men to have better lives. But it, it, it suggests that there are 25 significant decisions that when all those decisions are controlled for, that men today actually earn less money than women do for the same work. They earn more money than women do for 25 different types of decisions at work. But obviously those decisions allow for a road map to be created for any woman who wants to earn more money. But that going through each of those decisions, she can, she can find 25 different ways to earn more money than the average man should she wish to. However, each of those decisions come with trade-offs. When you, when you move quickly, when you work extra hours, oftentimes you don't enjoy it as much when you work in certain fields like hazardous occupations. Most people don't enjoy dying as much. And so the, um, the, uh, the outcome of doing these, these things that earn more money do not necessarily lead to a better life. So I, look, so I interview top women who have succeeded in the world in terms of financial success. And I say to them, if you were to talk to your granddaughter, and advise her as to what you would do over again. What would you do differently? What would you do the same? I always say granddaughter because your children never listen. Um, so, uh, so now I'm going to ask us, though, to test out this thesis in, a, in our own lives right here in the room. So I'm going to ask you to do two things. I'm going to ask you to stand up if you fit a certain description. I'm going to ask you to look around and get a sense as to whether there are more men than women standing up. And I'm going to be asking you to count the number of times that you stand up. So keep track of the number of times that you stand up. Um, so at the end, I'll be asking for some, some calculations so we can see.